Most of the story this season has been centered around the Endless Knight and Mithrax, but the Crow does still have an emerging story hidden behind some lore cards and some secret audio. Today we're going to take a look at the Crow's relationship with the Fallen, Spider's hatred toward the House of Light, and some secret dialogue you've never heard before. Bungie has done a fantastic job with the story arc of the Crow. Taking this character that most people hate in Aldrin Sov, bringing him back where you probably still hate him, but as you learn what the Crow goes through, being hated by other Guardians, being used by the Spider and saved by our own Guardian, we begin to feel for him. This isn't the same man that once killed Cade Six. Zavala looks at me, and I feel like he really sees me. Who I am, not who I was. He didn't say much else, just that it might be a good idea if I laid low while he figured things out here. At first, the crow was stuck with the spider, doing his chores back in the season of the hunt. But upon saving him, Osiris would give him some new clothes and a mask, telling him to come to the city, we'll try it out, just make sure you don't show anyone your face or people might recognize you. Throughout the weeks in the season of The Chosen, Crow would assist our Guardian in the battle against Keitel's forces and also those rogue scions plotting Zavala's assassination. When jumping in to save Zavala a second time in that cutscene, his mask breaks all dramatically, revealing to the Vanguard leader who he truly is. Are you alright? I'm... alive. Despite all of this though, they recognize that Crow is different. He doesn't remember his past life, and he wants to help the Guardians and the last safe city. So at first, when Osiris brought him to the city, the Crow was a scout. At the end of Season of the Chosen, Zavala said he wants him to be his recon agent, to track down the conspirators who attempted to take him out. After that though, what happens this season and what's going on with the Crow? Let's discuss. Can't say I'm enjoying lying low, Commander. Reminds me of the old days. But, hey, I'm nothing if not good at following orders. If it was my choice, I'd be there helping you get the Elixni settled in the city. Might be hard to believe, but they're more like us than you think. Just give them a chance, like you did for me. Velasque. That's how they say hello. Just so you know. I'm the most qualified for this. Crow's voice reverberated off the immense window, making the Vanguard commander's office feel even more cavernous than it was. At night, the edges of Zavala's office were usually dark, but the miasma of Vex energy that swirled in the city below made it more so. Crow sighed and paced in the gloom like a caged animal. Zavala faced the window and stood unmoving, a statue carved of Larimar depicting a test of infinite patience. He glanced over at Ikora, her hands gently clasped as she watched Crow with disquieted contemplation. We know, she said after what felt like an eternity, but your expertise and relationship with the Elixni aren't the only deciding factors here. Exactly how long am I going to be continually tried in a court of public opinion? Crow asked pointedly. And when in this trial will I be given a clear understanding of what I'm on trial for? Zavala regarded the Awoken's reflection in the window. It reminded him of their near-fatal walk through the gardens not all that long ago. His shoulders sagged. Crow, Zavala said as he turned to face him. This is a delicate decision. The consensus has come down hard on us for welcoming the Elixni into the city. And I can't have them using you as another bludgeon. So that's all this is? A political maneuver? Crow pushed. To protect yourselves. No hard feelings? Nothing behind the looks you give me when you don't think I'm watching. Zavala stiffened and Crow sensed the conversational temperature in the room change. This matter aside, if your past identity became public before we have a plan in place, it could cause considerable harm to you and the people you care about, Ikora said evenly. People who have come to care about you, she added. For a long time, no one spoke. 
and when Crow did, his voice was small. Then what? I keep hiding from the shadow of a man I was before... forever? Not forever, Ikora said firmly, but for now. Crow shifted his focus to Ikora and saw the hurt in her eyes. He'd seen it in Amanda's too, whenever she spoke of the dead. Without another word, he nodded and left. Ikora closed her eyes and the breath she'd been holding slowly left her. He's going to Osiris, she warned. And if Osiris is half the leader he's shown himself to be, he'll tell him the same thing, Zavala said with great fatigue, finally sinking into his chair. In the momentary silence that settled between them, Ikora felt an unspoken reciprocation of their generation's old friendship. I don't know how long we can protect him, she confessed. Neither do I. So that card right there is pretty powerful. We see the struggle of keeping Crow's identity a secret still, even after the Vanguard know who he is. Crow wanted to help the House of Light integrate, but the Vanguard don't think it's a good idea given his relationship previously with the Fallen. We know, of course, the Awoken had the Fallen working for them like the House of Wolves. We saw the Dusk in the Forsaken cutscene and other times in the lore as well. So it's probably not a good idea if the first time the civilians see the crow, they think it's Aldrin Sov with some fallen. Now despite Ikora and Zavala wanting him to keep this a little hush-hush, Crow does still want to help the Elixni and the House of Light, and he does. The pipes are silent. Ether production is paused during batch loading, and in that interstitial time, Spider's lair feels like a tomb. Every creak and groan from his throne becomes excruciatingly pronounced. Spider reclines against one arm, rolling a dead ghost shell in one hand, scraping a clawed finger across its gray, lifeless eye. The arrival of a trusted associate pulls Spider from his thoughts. Avrox, Spider bellows, turning his attention to the armored Elixni striding through the doorway. What did you find? Avrok approaches the spider's throne, wringing his hands together anxiously. Our thief, my lord. Spider leans forward with a groan of cables suspending his throne. And what did you do to them? He asks in greedy anticipation. That, however, is where Avrok falters. I did not catch them, my lord. Avrok humbly answers, his much smaller frame eclipsed in spider's shadow. But I have a name. Out with it, Spider grouses, falling back against his throne with deflated interest. The Crow. Spider's blood turns to fire, his grip tightens on the dead ghost so hard that its shell cracks. Spider continues squeezing until the glass eye completely pops. Then he takes a moment to compose himself. Our little bird, come home to the nest so soon? Tell me everything. He was able to infiltrate the storehouse, Avrok explains, and coerce a team of laborers to offload cargo promised to the Empress on a skiff, which he then stole, along with a cache of your more, uh, personal belonging, among which was the quantum opal. Avrok shrinks lower, lower, lower. The supplies were delivered to Mithrax in your name, as a gift. And the workers, the spider growls. They are gone? Avrok doesn't mean to make it sound like a question. He regrets taking the tone immediately. To where exactly? They, Avrok takes a small step back from the spider's throne. Left, he clenches his jaw, with the crow. Spider slowly leans forward again. For Earth, Avrok concludes. The ether pipes begin to hum and rattle as a new batch begins production elsewhere in the complex. The noises rise in intensity, turning into the familiar hissing wail that joins with the uncomfortable sound of Spider laughing. The Baron of the Shore throws his dead ghost at Avrok, who ducks away from it, covering his head with his hands. He's taking them to Mithrak, Spider says between fitful chuckles and wheezing coughs. He steals from me and gives it to the House of Light? Unbelievable. Though behind the laughter and coughs, there is a hint of appreciation in his tone. The kid's grown a spine. There is, Avrak starts, offering Spider a folded piece of paper. One more thing, he left this behind. Spider's seal is scribbled on one side, for you. As Spider unfolds a note, Avrak creeps further away from the throne. 
Inside is nothing more than a crude drawing and a rude missive. That little sh the pipes are howling. So that's pretty funny. The crow went to the Tangled Shore to take supplies from the spider and give them to the House of Light and Mithrax. Although Spider admits that Crow has grown his spine and he is a little impressed, he is also super angry, completely crushing that dead ghost in his hands and throwing it at one of his workers. The story then takes a turn though, as Spider has a spy among the elixir that left with the Crow. Avra hauled a metal crate from the dropship towards the haphazard elixir settlement. He moved slowly, matching the pace of his malnourished workmates. Though he had fasted during this trip, Ahra knew that his solid frame still made him stand out. He feared it would reveal him as the imposter and infiltrator he was, even while dressed as a house salvation deserter. During the approach to Earth, Ahra had been overawed. The last city looked like a perfect ripple of light from far above, dropped from the impassive form of the great machine. Avra wondered for the first time in his life if the spider was wrong about the Guardians, but his misgivings evaporated as soon as he emerged from the dropship. Rather than living in a gleaming city of crystal, the Elixni were packed into bombed out ruins of a former war zone. The area they'd been given appeared to be on the verge of collapse. Avra sneered inwardly. Did the Guardians really believe that the Elixni could be pacified so cheaply? That they were content to live under the boots of the vanguard gnawing at scraps? Perhaps it was true for fools like Misrax, his awoken raised hatchling, and cowards like the empty weaver. But the spider's acquiescence would not be so easily bought. In fact, Avra thought the spider could probably own the settlement within a year. The generosity and goodwill of the House Light would soon crumble to greed and hubris, as they all did. And once Spider's Syndicate had a foothold, they would make the Vanguard pay, in glimmer, weapons, ether, and blood. So this is a great story right there. Crow thinks he's being all sneaky, taking these supplies and leaving Spider a little note. All the while there is a Syndicate spy on board his ship, now in the Elixni camp ruins under the Traveler. What's important is that we can see the ties that Crow has to the Elixni. We knew that Aldrin had these ties and even resurrected as a guardian with a new slate in terms of memory, he still wants to help the House of Light and Mithrax. We next have some audio where Crow is spending time with some Fallen. Now you heard me say secret message, this is that message. It was kind of secretive because only certain content creators got sent a tape recorder with this information on it, but as of late Bungie posted it to Twitter and it's much more clear. Now, I can only play the first part of this, but I'll read the rest after. Hey, Guardian. There was one night early in my stay with Spider. I don't remember why he was angry. Either I did something stupid or said something smart. But he kicked me out. I'm sitting in this alley on the tangled shore next to piles of scrap and garbage, feeling like I belong there. And these three elixni approach me. Now, I'm not in the best place emotionally, so I pull myself together and stand up, ready to spend the rest of the night dead. But they just say, Velask. That means hello. And they bring me inside a little market and push a warm cup of something into my hands and start talking to me. I say talking, but they only spoke Elixni. They'd point to something, and they'd say what it was, and I'd repeat it, and <laughs> they'd laugh, that sort of thing. And then we hear music. So from there, Hope for the Future begins playing, which is Paul McCartney's song that he made for Destiny. And that would definitely get flagged by copyright, so I'll continue reading what Crow says. He says, So they got up and started, well I wouldn't call it dancing exactly, but they were definitely moving. I was just sitting there watching them while this ethereal music was bleeding out of some club. And you know, it was honestly one of the best nights I ever had. The audio then continues for about another minute with the song. 
So this is really cool. Crow is most likely talking about the Lost Sector located next to the spider, where you can actually hear the song itself and some others, essentially a little fallen club going on there. Now this is amazing because it further shows Crow's relationship with the Fallen. I mean, he says it's one of the best nights he's ever had. Anyway, Guardians, that's all we got for today's video on the Crow and the Fallen. Let me know down below where you think this journey with the spider spy in the city may go in the future. If you'd like to see some other lore and mysteries just like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. My name's Evade, and I'll catch you, Guardians, in the next one.